what's up everybody, my name is Trofinet, the babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific cards or very interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to do something that the cool kids call memeing. Because today, as you can see here in my deck list, I've brought back a deck from, uh, well, a while ago, I made a very long time ago, that was originally called Angoulême's Revenge, and right now I've made a lot of adjustments and called it Angoulême's Return. It's basically still the same uh, type of deck, so it's an Assimilate deck. As you know, I'm not a big fan of Nilfgaard, I've never hidden that fact, but Assimilate is still a very, very cool mechanic, and that's exactly what we're going to be using here in this deck. Um, since we're talking about the Angoulême's Return deck, it makes sense that we talk about her first. So Angoulême spawns and plays a random artifact from your opponent's starting deck, if of course your opponent has an artifact in their starting deck. Why did I go with this deck again? Well, it's become more interesting because people actually use more artifacts now that most of the artifact removal has been removed in the latest patch. So the only things that can actually remove artifacts anymore are, I think, Karate Heatwave and Shoe. Uh, other than that, all, all the artifact removal has been, well, removed. Because of that, Angoulême has become a bit more viable again, especially with Assimilate, she triggers that multiple times over the course of you using that artifact that should hopefully be a scenario that you can use just multiple times and triggering Assimilate every single time. To accommodate for that, I've also added Portal to the deck, so that basically allows you to summon a random unit with 4 provision from your deck on both sides of this card, so... For that, I've actually added um, four, four provision cards, which all have assimilate. So Portal guarantees you to assimilate units at the start of your turn. Well, you should ideally use it at the start of your turn. So that's a Dougal Guard and the Art Fane Heavy Cavalry. Uh, Dougal Guard has four power with assimilate and the Art Fane Heavy Cavalry has three power, but with two armor on top of that. It's not really shown in the deck preview right now, but you just have to take my word for it. And you'll see it in the demo match after this as well. Let's go back up a little bit because the bronze cards aren't really what this deck is about. It's about those fancy golden cards. Then we've added Bratens, also a new card from Master Mir, if I'm not mistaken. Also has Assimilate and allows you to play a Bronze Disloyal Nilfgaardian unit. Which means that you're basically guaranteed to um, actually pull, I'm actually going to pull her here, the Duchess Informant um, and use her to make another um, well, unit from your opponent's faction. So that triggers Assimilate twice because that Duchess Informant wasn't in your deck either. So again... Assimilate triggers when you play a card that was not in your starting deck. So even if it's from your faction, you actually get Assimilate if that card wasn't there. So you're spawning copies or stuff like that. So uh, that also explains the Duchess Informant. Let's go back to the gold cards. Then Coup de Grasse is basically um, amazing in this deck. So it's an Echo card, so you can use it twice, uh, spread over two rounds. But you can damage an enemy unit by two, and if you kill it, you spawn and play a base copy of it. If you do that on a spying unit, you always trigger that that blow ability. So you play the copy of that unit. It's perfect on any of our spying units like the uh, Duchess's Informant that we just talked about. Or if you just want to copy a low health engine unit from your opponent. But usually we'll use it on those spying units. And talking about that, we also have Joachim de Wet. And he basically allows you to play the top non-disloyal unit from your deck and boost it by 8. Not spectacular on its own, you can use it twice by using Coup de Grasse, but with Yennefer's Invocation, you can place an enemy unit from the board, you can just grab that and put that at the top of your deck, and then in the next turn you can play that card with Joachim the Vet, because it's going to be guaranteed that card, since it's at the top of your deck. And bribery is always nice in an assimilate deck. It's a bit of a, a guess whether it's going to work or not. Because uh, bribery allows you to play a unit from your opponent's starting deck. And it gives you three choices. But those three choices are random from your entire opponent's starting deck. So that can be just three crappy bronzes if you're unlucky. Then the last time I created this deck I had... Uh, I got a lot of criticism for in including the Tony Shielmar. And I'm going to try to prove that that was not a wrong choice. 
because uh, Tony Shilmar is amazing. If you're playing Nilf Guardian, you get a guaranteed 7 damage out of this, which is enough to take out any of the engines in uh, Nilfgaard. And if you don't play Nilfgaard, then you can just put that on the range row and you get a 2 point boost for every card you basically copied from your opponent, which ramps up pretty quickly. Up. It's not unusual to see like 16 point Shilmars in this deck. Um, which is really, really nice, especially with a lot of the um, like the, the token spawning engine cards in the other factions, like for example the uh, the Frigate in Northern Realms. If you copy one of those and just spawn those uh, those uh, Freelancers or what are they called, the Volunteers, uh, you get a lot of cards from a different faction. And then Shailmar just skyrockets into, uh, well, the Stratosphere. Then Mano Kuhorn is... Basically one of the choices I'm still hesitating about. I've included Menno so you can pull any of the tactics cards in this deck. So that's Coup de Gras, um, Bribery or any of the, the lower ones. So Experimental Remedy down here and Imperial Diplomacy. But I basically replaced Artorius Vigo. Oh, let's not pull any cards. Artorius Vigo with um, Menno Kuhorn. Because Artorius, in my demo matches I don't get the value out of Artorius. There's... I, I feel like I just have too many bronzes in my deck to pull the Duchess Informant uh, consistently because that's what you basically want to do. You want to pull that Duchess Informant. But you can go either way. You can go with Meadow Kuhorn or you can go with Artorias Vigo. So that's a bit of a replacement choice that you can do yourself. Then of course, Glynis, still awesome. Uh, two points assimilate. So every time you trigger assimilate, you get boosted by two points instead of just one. And then Cantarella basically gives you a free card from your opponent from their deck. Basically allows you to thin your opponent's deck a little bit as well. And if you know what card is on top of the deck, that's even better because you can play it immediately. Um, situations like that basically involve either if you get hit by Yennefer's Invocation from your opponent, you can pull that card right back from your opponent's deck if you want to. And also against monsters, if, they, if your opponent played the Nagelfar, you know that there's a fancy golden card on top of his deck right now. Um, so you can use Cantarella to pull that card as well. Uh, other than that, we have the basic Assimilate Bronze card. So uh, Experimental Remedy to pull those Duchess Informants from your opponent's graveyard again. And then Imperial Diplomacy to pull, yeah, create a random bronze card from your opponent's deck. And then Slave Hunter, Imperial Diviner. And yeah, that's basically it for the uh, Assimilate units. And then, of course, two turning jazz to have some removal ready. Um, but that's a deck. Um, I'm going to try out a few matches. I want to just um, show you guys what the strength is of Angoulême. So for that, I need to have an opponent that, of course, uses an artifact, which might take me a few matches. So bear with me and uh, let's head into one of those example matches. So first one was kind of a bust against a very, very strong Nature's Gift deck and I kind of misplayed a few times as well. But the second one is Monsters. So Monsters is something that we definitely can use if we even pull Angoulême here, guys. <laughs> We're not getting her just yet. So let's just get rid of the Art Feints because we can pull them with Portal um, like this, maybe not just yet. Okay, that's not ideal if I want to try this, but it is what it is. We're gonna try and make this work. So, Antarella is in our hand though, so that's gonna be really good if we wanna play that out. Um, and that's Andrega Larva. I might as well pull that first. So let's uh, start just very heavy with Broughtons. A cursed into an urchin indeed, and then we can just grab those Andrega larva and get ourselves a five point Bratens to start with. Um, there's a few other fancy things that we can do to start with because we're starting out heavy anyway. I'm basically basically going to use all my golden cards in my hand and then just, uh, yeah, try to add to that with the Duchess Informants. And there we go, we get a Bruxa to start with as well. So that gives us, yeah, bleeding on Bratons, which is fine. Uh, I could just actually just purify that off with the Diviner. So that's not a problem at all. And we can use the Tri from the Andrega Larva to our advantage as well. So that's gonna be fine for the first round, I think, just uh, banking on that Tri. So last match was actually kind of exciting because I got uh, very lucky with Cantarella. I actually pulled the uh, Tristella Kinesis from uh, my opponent's deck with uh, Cantarella, which 
gave me a triple um, assimilate trigger, which was really nice. So that's a waste of a parasite in my mind. Um, but let's see. I think I might as well just place the Art Fane, because that also gives us a Thrive trigger and gives us two assimilate units. I want to try and keep two assimilate units on the board, so that means that every time I play a unit from my opponent, I get two points extra, which is nice. And then the Barbagazi. Interesting. I could actually go for Barbagazi as well. Hmm. So let's just play Cantarella first. I want to see what's on top of my opponent's deck. That could be something very juicy, like, like a Goliath, for example. That's really, really good. That is just perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, and I can even use that Goliath to thin out my opponent's deck even more. Because that pulls out the highest unit from our opponent's deck. So if that's uh, Vigern, for example, so that's just going to destroy one of the... Yeah, well, either one of the Andrega Larva, there we go. Or something else, but... That's about it. Not a problem at all. Let's just pull another... Um, let's just grab that Barbagazi. There we go. That gives us two consumes as well, and we just gained equal points. So now we're equal. I don't want to be equal. Uh, I actually want to just pull some more stuff from your deck. So I'm just going to play Mano uh, with Coup de Grasse on top of Cantarella, which is an Assimilate Trigger on its own. So there we go. don't know why there was that delay, but uh, this is Assimilate on its own. And then we pull... Okay, we pull the Seleno Harpy. That also gives us Drive and another Assimilate Trigger, so that is absolutely fine. There we go. Now, I want to get Angoulême, so that's why I want to go into three rounds, because I want to get Angoulême. I know Monsters has a very long, uh, very powerful short round as well, so if I can avoid that, all the better. I want to get uh, the benefit from those tries. So, Goliath for us, and now... Coup de Grasse, Bravery, and Turny Shielmar. That's all very good. I think... Let's see. So if I can get rid of... Let's just get rid of the Ambassador. Yeah, and then another Medicine. Damn it. Okay. So let's hope that we can get... We can get Angoulême in the last one. Because I really want to show this off. Because it's a really, really cool combo if you can pull it off. And I'm hoping that my opponent... But judging from the Deathwish units, I'm guessing there's going to be Haunt in their deck. And if there's Haunt, there's going to be a lot of points on our side of the board. There we go. So round two completed with a pass round. And then, please. Please give us Angoulême. I've done a bit of thinning. There she is. Okay, that's really, really good. That is really, really good. Uh, there's a few other things I want to pull. Maybe Yennefer's Invocation or Joachim. Because we're getting neither again. Uh, the Slave Hunter is fine. I don't need two root. Oh, Glynis, that's also fine. Okay. Okay, so let's start with a portal. I hope. I, I hope my opponent has Haunt. Because otherwise I'm going to be fucked anyway. Um, they can show that rather quickly. Because usually if they have Haunt, they're going to be playing Haunt first. But it stays quiet on the other side of the field. So I'm hoping something is going to happen. And this game just doesn't crash or anything. Because that would be very bad for the video. But I'm hoping not. <laughs> Come on, buddy. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. Show me that haunt. Show me that haunt. So I don't look like a fool just demonstrating this deck right now. Well, that's that's a start at least. Um, I could even pull... I could be very ballsy and play um, our leader ability now. I'm not going to. I'm going to wait one more turn. So Portal gives us two assimilate units, and then Double Cross hopefully gets us something really juicy from our opponent's hand. That could be either an Oberon or Haunt, but it's going to depend on all of that. I only have one more assimilate unit aside from that, so it's fine. So next turn it's going to be Glynis and then Double Cross. And let's hope that's going to be a juicy Double Cross. And we get Maruna, so that's going to give yeah our opponent either of my assimilate units there. 
There we go. The juiciest one to that. And then, yeah, we're just gonna play Glynis. And then double cross. And we don't get anything juicy, but... Oswell is nice. Oswell is nice. I could also play... I'm just hesitating what has the most benefit here. Because I could play the Werecat. Because Oswell has 11 points, but the Werecat has 5, but then has Thrive. So I'm just going to do that. So let's put that on the back row. And that should give us something at least. We have a few other options. There it is. There's Haunt. Okay, that's really good. I'm a bit sad that we couldn't go double Haunt. Because you can actually pull Haunt with double cross as well. Um, but now I need to be careful. Uh, I could just turn each house that, but I'm hoping there's going to be another Oberon in there as well. And if we get that, all the better. So, first things first, let's put our last Assimilate unit on the field. That gives us a little bit of Thrive. And that's all our Assimilate units. So that's really, really juicy and good and all of the wonderful stuff. And there we get Ruin. Ruin. Huh. I could grab that as well if I want to. Um, oh, I can grab that. And I am going to grab that. So first things first, let's play uh, Angoulême. So let's play her down here. And then we get Halt. And that's where the juicy stuff starts because that triggers Assimilate once. And this is just going to be really good. Uh, so that gives us two units from our opponent's faction. We're going to start consuming uh, the ones that we don't use. So Angoulême is sadly going to die. So she just returns to then get eaten by a monster. But that, that ruin, I'm, I'm going to grab that ruin in a minute. Oh, but that's also so juicy. Uh, but that's going to be eaten by... Is that going to be eaten? Yeah, okay. That was obviously going to get eaten. Okay. So now... Oh, this is just too much fun, isn't it? Uh, so now I'm going to just use the Slave Hunter to damage Ruin and then grab the Ruin with Coup de Grasse. And that gives us that big boy. And we're then going to just eat it the same way that our opponent did. There we go. So just copying our opponent's tactics. That is exactly how Assimilate works. You assimilate your opponent's units. Uh, so we still have two consumes on the field. We could technically also just grab that bar guest um, with a Duchess informant. And just have, yeah, basically unlimited consumes until we hit the end of the match. So that's not a problem at all. If our opponent plays another juicy thing, we might just grab that as well. And remember, we still have bribery too. So yeah. I just need to be careful that my lower row remains open, but that's not going to be a problem, I think. So that's dominance. Uh, now, let's go with bribery. And bribery gives us another ruin. Um, no, I'm going to do... What's our opponent's field right now? Oh, that would be really ballsy. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to grab Maruna. Um, Maruna goes over here on the range throw. And then we get the rats over here. So I can't consume um, Maruna just... Well, I can consume her with the... Yeah. Let's just do that right now. I want to see what happens. <laughs> okay. That was, that was the best. That was oh, one chance. That was 25% chance. <laughs> Oh, that is just too good. That was just hilarious. And... Um, yeah! Oh, this is... This is just... This is just the best. Oh, this is just the best. Um... So I do need to be careful now, because... I... <laughs> oh, sorry, I shouldn't be laughing about this, but this is just too hilarious. So I'm just gonna put, like, a Duchess Informant over here. I grab that other bar guest um, and put it over here. 
Um, I'm gonna grab that full power ruin over here. So that gives us another trigger on Glynis' assimilate. And I'm filling up my opponent's board as well. I need to get over that, um, that 20 points if I wanted to do more consumes. Unless my opponent plays like something like, you know, something fancy. Like Barbagazi would be really nice. I can use that. But yeah. <laughs> oh, that was just ridiculous. So right now I have also something to note. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units from my opponent's faction. So that is also very nice. Um, I'm gonna play Experimental Remedy now. A bit of blood and grab another Duchess Informant, put that over here. And grab another Vargas. I need those consumes coming in, because otherwise I might be in trouble. Um, I'm just gonna put the Vargas over here and then grab the Ruben on the end of the row. That gives us dominance. Which means that I can now also eat the one over here. And then eat the one, uh, the Angoulême that's basically in the way. Do I need to actually generate a lot more units? I don't think so, right? Um, let's keep that final consume under wraps. Yeah, let's do, let's, let's keep that final consume under wraps. We need those two consumes for the ruins. There we go. So now it will depend on whether our opponent still has... Um, that wish units. I should have probably used that consume, but if I don't get it, I don't get it. But right now, I'm just having to count here. Yeah, so they have a consume, but not a that wish. So that means that we actually have dominance. Unless they... Okay, so they go for that. Okay, so they go for that. That's really risky, because if I still have Yennefer's Invocation in my hand, that 27 points is just gone. But it won't be gone. And the Tourney Chouse isn't going to put that low enough. And I have one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units. So that's 20 points. Oh, it does actually. It does actually. Holy crap. Okay, so I'm gonna do. Um. Tourney Chaos? No, no. Um, Tourney Shielmar first. So I have those points. So that's 24 points. And then I can use Sterny Chest in my hand to lower that Ekimara to 23, giving us dominance again and allowing us to use those two remaining consumes. So they're deciding. I'm guessing... Olsgel, yeah, but Olsgel isn't going to go high enough. So I'm hoping I'm not getting... Ah, okay, they passed. <laughs> there we go. I could have gone even further, but that lucky ruin swap, that was... Yeah, that was too bad for them, wasn't it? Yeah, so uh, there we go. That proves you that Angoulême is really, really powerful. Um, we just, well, we just aced that, didn't we? There we go. Proven, point proven, deck proven. I'm happy, you're happy, hopefully. Uh, let's go back to the deck and show you that. So again, if you're not comfortable with Angoulême, you can replace Angoulême with uh, stuff like, for example, Leto Kingslayer. It's basically the same amount of um, provisions. And you get another Assimilate unit with that. And it also triggers Assimilate because whatever Leto changes into was not in your base deck. So you get an Assimilate trigger. Um, other than that, I hope that proved to you how powerful this deck can be if played against the right opponent. It is situational, but I did rank up with this uh, once already, so it is a really good deck. Um, so I'm just going to roll through it one more time so you can take a look at it right here. The link to this deck is also available in the comment section, well not in the comment section, in the description of this video, so you can, can just copy it from the Plague Went website into your own deck builder and have fun from there. So um, hopefully you guys like this video because I, I really like this deck. It's uh, Assimilate is my favorite thing in Nilfgaard, even though it's a faction that I don't really like myself. But uh, Assimilate is just a bomb. It just allows you to focus on the strengths of your opponent and turn that against them, like we just did against that monster deck. So monster decks are really vulnerable to this. Um, I've also seen uh, very good results against Skellige, both just the Warriors, because Assimilate kind of has, um, kind of can offset the damage that the, your opponent can do. You can use Yennefer's Invocation, we haven't been able to use that. But Yennefer's Invocation is really good to grab evolving cards from your opponents and then play them yourself with Joachim the Vet. 
Um, but Skellig in general, and then of course, if they also have Genadith, so the uh, the scenario for uh, Skellige, then yeah, you basically won the match beforehand because Angoulême can just pull that as well. Um, Double Cross can even allow you to copy that again if it's still in your opponent's hand, but that's of course a bit risky, as so many things in this deck. But aside from that, I hope you uh, really enjoyed this episode. Uh, that the explanation was sufficient. If you still need more information, just ask me in the comment section down below and I'll try to help you out because that's what we're here for after all. Thank you guys enormously for watching. If you like this video, I have uh, a lot of other videos on Gwent decks and just Gwent mechanics in general in the my backlog. So if you check that out, you'll find something that suits your fancy. So thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye.